Oh, to God be the glory. Where are we going tonight, Danny? Would you turn to Matthew 12? Matthew chapter 12. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Glory to God. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. Matthew 12 and verse 43. Is everybody there? Let's read this together, please. Hallelujah. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Now, when an unclean spirit comes out of an individual, now, now I'm not saying that a, a, they have to be cast out every time. Because sometimes if you deny that spirit, from being fed, he'll leave you. Many people who go to jail, who've just been using and drinking and smoking cigarettes and so forth, they go to jail, and after a couple days, those desires are gone. And the reason for that is because that spirit has left, because he cannot get fed. Is everybody with me? But it doesn't mean he's gone permanently, does it? So he just knows he can't get fed, and he'll go somewhere else. And in about a week or two before an individual gets ready to get out of jail, those spirits are back, priming them. You know, they've come back with their fork and their knife and their uh, napkins and so forth, getting ready to eat as soon as that person walks out the front door. So we've got to have an understanding that there is a, an area where a spirit will leave or even come as he pleases uh, if you'll let him. Amen. So we know that when a spirit, an unclean spirit goes out of a man, now these unclean spirits are called demons. Hello. A demon is a disembodied spirit. He had a body at one time. And I'm not going to go into the teaching of demons. But he had a body at one time. And he lost it. Okay. That's why angels do not possess individuals. Angels have bodies. They don't need one. Demons need one. Is everybody with me? That's why God sent the flood. Hello. He had to kill them all. Glory to God. But their spirits still roamed. So demons are disembodied spirits, unclean spirits, looking for a host. So don't be the host. Amen. So when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. You know what the house is? You. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Now this is pretty powerful because that house has been emptied, swept, and put in order. That person just got cleaned, didn't they? just got clean. The problem is, is that person never got filled. Hello? It's just like, you know, they have this program now that um, uh, cutting trees down, you know, for wood and whatever. They have a program that when that tree gets cut down, they plant another one. Well, when this tree gets cut down, its spirit's gone, you must plant another one. And the one that you want to plant in there is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? And that's one of the things people have a problem with. They may get set free, and they don't know how to maintain their deliverance. And that's what I want to talk about, is maintaining deliverance. Now it says, listen, then he says, I will return to my house. And let me share something with you. These demons believe that they're, you're their house till the day you die. So this house is taken from this earth. Those devils that we've been harboring for such a long time are always going to come back to try and claim their house. Satan still claims you as his children, even though you're not his anymore. He still claims you as his child. Amen? Now, and then it says, and he, come on, read it with me. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, so it also be with this wicked generation. Now, understand something, that the number seven means complete and perfect, doesn't it? Amen. 
Amen. And if you look at it, you can find that Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast out seven demons out of her. Now, a strong man is a high-ranking demon. All right? And a demon is a disembodied spirit. So this strong man, that's why the Bible says, before you enter the house, you must bind the strong man to plunder the goods of the evil one. So you must learn the weapons. You want to maintain deliverance? You want to maintain your freedom of deliverance? You've got to learn how to fight. Because if you're not in the battle, you're going to become a casualty. Those demons are going to come back sly and wicked and enter you through many ways. And, and let me share something with you. This false garbage of a believer can't have a demon is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, how can the demon fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Well, you know, the Bible says that we live and breathe and have our being in God. And there's demons in God, aren't there? Hello? We live and have, we breathe and have our being in God. Everything was created from God, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I mean, a demon is a, just a disobedient spirit. It's unclean. It's a lustful demon. It's a spirit. It's called a demon. It's called unclean spirit. Well, we're going to associate with the clean spirit. Amen. If you look at your house of like having seven rooms, <laughs> seven meaning complete perfect, right? And Jesus cast out those devils out of those rooms. That's why some people can pray in the spirit and do all kinds of stuff, but still have certain characteristics of the presence of that devil because he's not been totally freed yet. Not been totally freed. Is everybody all right? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, believers can have demons. So this individual was talking about an unclean spirit leaves a person. Uh, hey, look at that demon's coming back. He's going to come back. He's going to haunt you. He's going to shoot fiery darts at you. He's going to try and skip, uh, trip you up. All kinds of things he's going to do to you because he wants that house back. He's been paying free rent for a long time. Hello? Hello? Oh, come on, man. He's had a good old time in us. Yeah. We were feeding him like crazy. Yeah. When, you were, when you and I were part of the world, disco ducking and all that other stuff, drinking and partying, lusting and fornicating and all kinds of stuff, those devils were right there. We were, they were using us and we thought we were using them. <laughs> Some people think that we're conning other people. Believe me, we're the ones that are being conned. Just even consider conning someone else. When you're manipulating, you're being manipulated. When you're, be when you're lying, you're being lied to. Hello? Every manifestation in the natural realm is associated with a spirit, either clean or unclean. And it better be the clean one that you want. Remember, you're, you're made of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit communes with the spirit world. You may not know it, but it is. Your soul interprets what's being brought forth, and your body does the work. That's why the Bible says, renew your mind, or your soul must be renewed. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Keep him awake, please. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Glory to the Lamb. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Glorious. Oh, praise be to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm sorry, not 5. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, chapter 15. Hold on a second. Sometimes I can't read my writing. Uh, yeah. No. Hello. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. Glorious Hallelujah. Got it. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. In verse 16 and 17. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, 
yet now we know him thus no longer. We don't know Jesus in the flesh any longer. He's not in the flesh any longer. Amen? In verse 17, would you read it with me? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now that is a powerful statement. That is a very powerful statement. All things have passed away. Let me share something with you. If you realize that your old things have passed away and they're now beginning to reoccur, that demon is back. Is everybody with me? Yeah. If the old things that you've been freed from, that you knew you were freed from, that you've been delivered from, right? All of a sudden, you're beginning to do the same things you used to. Whatever it may be. Attitudes. Whatever it is. Desires. That spirit's back. Well, I didn't feel him enter. Well, you're not going to feel him enter. He doesn't work that way. That's why the devil's called the most cunning beast. He's going to be very, very subtle. Well, it says that you're a new creation in Christ. Well, if you're a new creation, old things have passed away, but some of the things have returned that were passed away, that spirits returned with them. That's the only way that those things can begin to manifest again is by the spirit bringing them. Is everybody with me? Amen. You know, so many people think, well, you know, it's just, it's just how I feel. It's just, that's just how I think. Well, who's telling you that and why do you have that feeling? Because that spirit has brought it back again. You know, so many times we get so complacent and so comfortable and so religious that we begin to actually fake our freedom. I'm fine. And in their mind, they're thinking, jerk, and this, and that. Oh, I hate that person. Oh, if I could do this. I don't like when that person does this. I don't, let me tell you, that demon is back. Hello? Remember, the devil isn't stupid. But he wants to make us stupid. If what you've been freed from is return, the only a spirit can bring it. That's it. Only the spirit can bring You know, the spirit can bring sickness back. Hello? That's why people lose their sickness. That's why they lose their healing, I mean. People get healed and they go back to the same old thing they were doing before. Some of them go back to eating the way they were before. And they get sick all over again. Well, how did they go back? Because they didn't know how to maintain their deliverance. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that you can... You, you know, desires. Desires are a manifestation of either the presence of a Holy Spirit or an unclean spirit. Your desires. What do you desire? Are you desiring to expand the kingdom of God? Are you desiring to do the will of God? Are you desiring to worship the Lord? Are you desiring to be in His presence? Are you desiring to please Him? Well, if you're not, then something is there blocking it. Does everybody understand that? If you're still, and you know, the Bible tells us, he, he whose mind's on the things of the world, it's called carnality. And it's called death. But he who's in the spirit has the mind set on things of the spirit. Amen? Yeah. And it's life and peace. There's a difference between torment and peace. Demonic activity brings torment. It brings worry. It brings fear. It brings confusion. And the devil always tries to convince you, you don't have that devil. It can't be talking about you. Must be about somebody else. Let me tell you something. This vessel isn't talking about any specific person. Does everybody understand it? <laughs> He's talking about us all. <laughs> if, if you realize that you're... 
certain desires that are not godly. Hello? Desires that may bring harm to your body. Um, when you begin to obey these desires, when you begin to have obedience to these desires, I mean, that spirit's there. He's convincing you to obey those desires. <laughs> uh, in our discipleship program, when people leave early, they don't fulfill the fullness of what Christ has called them to do. That desire to leave has been brought by a spirit. Amen? And usually what happens is the devils, let me tell you something. The powers of darkness know when God is about to do something in your life. And they do everything they can to distract you and move you out of position. Your greatest fight is when your greatest blessing is about to come. Sometimes how big the fight is is how big the blessing is. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you can, you can also, as you're checking yourself, your attitude. You know your attitude will draw demonic activity? Your attitude draws demons or draws the Holy Spirit. You know, when you're thirsty and hungry, the Bible says um, uh, those who thirst and hunger shall be filled. Right? Well, that's because they're thirsty and hungry for God's presence. They're drawn the presence of the Lord, aren't they? Well, your attitude could draw demonic activity. You know? How you, how you react and what you do. That's how you need to check yourself. What's your attitude? Hey, when you become rebellious, the Bible says rebellion is witchcraft. Witchcraft means association with demonic activity. If you're rebellious, if you're miserable, if you've lost the joy of the Lord or haven't had it, Something's not right. There's a spirit there. Remember, the Bible tells us we are not fighting flesh and blood. We are fighting evil spirits. Satan's kingdom, the ruler of this world, is Satan. Right? God's a creator. So we can never lose sight of these things. The Bible even says that when you've been delivered from something and you go back to it, it's an abomination to the Lord. And anything that's an abomination to the Lord draws demonic activity. Is everybody with me? Hallelujah. You know, you can you sense your character begins to change. When those spirits are there, your character begins to change. Did you ever notice that when you try to read your Bible certain times you get real tired? Oh. oh. That's a demon. Trying to put you to sleep. Oh. But man, you can sit in front of that TV for days. <laughs> you can read every other kind of book, novel, and whatever. Man, you pick up the Bible, it's like, oh. <laughs> and now I'm not talking about the anointing. The anointing breaks that yoke. <laughs> Some of y'all just got to pray in the Holy Ghost so you can break through. Go to Galatians 5:19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just come against a sluggard spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That sleepy spirit in the name of Jesus. We command that spirit to loose the people of God in this house in the name of Jesus. You got to agree with it now. Yeah. Amen. You got to agree with it. Remember the Bible says and these demons look for dry places, don't they? That's why I always tell people on Friday night, man, don't be a dry place. Everybody who's carried a demon into the service is going to you. <laughs> you become a hotel then. Galatians <laughs> chapter 5 and 19. Hallelujah. And it's not the California Inn either, whatever it is. Hotel California. Yeah. It's a demonic haven. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and what? And anything similar to it or like it. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also tell you in time past, that those who what? Practice. practice it. Practice it. Such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
When they believe the theology of once saved, always saved. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. Hello? It's not always how you begin, it's how you end. Praise God. So we see that these here are some of the fruits. In other words, these are fruits. If you're, if you're manifesting in these kind of fruits or something similar to it, you know that that spirit has come back. Or if you're still manifesting in it, you know that that spirit has never left. And you need deliverance. Amen? Amen. Go to Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 and verse 25. Would you all read it with me? Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Now he's telling you, here's the first thing he's saying, lying. Don't, man, don't be lying. All right? You find yourself exaggerating and lying? There's a spirit there. It's called pride. <laughs> he's the biggest, strongest spirit. Besides the deaf and dumb spirit. Those two spirits work together too. It says, put away lying, right? In verse 26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So it's our responsibility not to give place to the devil, isn't it? So once you've been delivered, healed, or freed up, it's our responsibility to not let those devils come back because they're going to come back, aren't they? We just read that. Jesus spoke it. They're going to come back even harder. Even harder. Listen, your fight today is harder than it was yesterday. And it's also easier than it will be tomorrow. <laughs> In verse 28, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. That's a whole change of attitude, isn't it? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Oh, man. Glory. You know, let me tell you something. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. You have to be careful what you speak because your next breath in to speak something else, that spirit just went... Poof. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Let me, when, let me tell you something. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, He backs off and every demon in hell is waiting to be accepted by you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Here's some more He's going to talk about. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In other words, like unforgiveness, yes. ridicule, criticism, yes. accusation. Yes. You know, when people get involved in that arena, they're just puffing their own flesh up. Yes. Now, the Bible says warn those. Amen? Yes. It's different. Warn those. You're doing that out of a pure heart, not out of a self-exaltation. And if somebody's not willing to take your warning, then so be it. You know, some people, uh, you know, even Paul said it, I turned this person over to Satan. That he might get saved. Right? I mean, <laughs> turn him over to Satan. I've seen it happen. I've had to do it myself. Turn him over to Satan. I turn him over to Satan. Why? So that he can get rescued. Sometimes your prayers are interfering with people. You don't even realize it. Maybe God's trying to get that person to rock bottom and you keep interfering with it. But I love him. Good, if you love him, take your hands off. And let God be God. Most of, in this, most of us in this room, most of us, not all of us, had to hit rock bottom. <laughs> so we can get up. <laughs> Amen? We had to hit rock. I mean, all kinds of Some of us had to hit it more than once. 
Hallelujah. So let all that bitterness go, unforgiveness. And in verse 32, and it says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Let me tell you something. If your heart's not tender, something's not right. Something's not right. If your heart is hardened, something's not right. <clears throat> Forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given Himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. How many of y'all want to be a sweet-smelling aroma? Praise God. <laughs> let's, go, let's go a little bit further. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Let me share something about covetousness. Covetousness is lust. You know, people say that they love someone. If you can't let that person go, you lust them, not love them. There's a difference. Does everybody understand that? You know, when, when, when I mean, domestic violence in the jail and all kinds of other stuff, you know, and they think, that the individual thinks they love this person. No, you lust that person because love is willing to let go. Yeah. Lust can never let go. It is torment. And it's a terrible thing to be married with your spouse and lust over your spouse because you'll never trust that spouse. You always walk in fear and worry of what that spouse is doing. That's not love. That's lust. Many people get married because of lust. Not love. And they call it love. That's just demonic love. <laughs> 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 hey, we have demonic wisdom and everything else, right? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> In verse 4. Oh, let's start at verse 3 again. For, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting. Phew. Foolish talking and coarse jesting. The Bible says, let your yeses be yes and your noes be noes. Other than that, shut up. Hello? <laughs> Why? Because you're going to open the door to the devil. Do you ever, I mean, do you ever find yourself getting caught up and trying to, all of a sudden you find yourself justifying. It's like, man, how did I get here? Because you didn't stop when you were supposed to. <laughs> And all of a sudden you find yourself exaggerating. Oh, man, I don't even like being in this position. How did I do that? And you find yourself repenting afterwards, right? Oh, Lord, how did I do this? Whatever. You just went beyond what you're supposed to do. You, you kept talking when you should have been quiet. Amen? Amen? You know what you just did, too? You opened yourself to the Spirit. Because once you've coursed, let me share this with you. You course just once, and you go, oh, forget, forgive me, Lord. Do you find yourself still coarse jesting? Just because you ask for forgiveness doesn't mean that devil's gone. you got to get rid of it now. Hello? Come on, when everybody asked Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, did you get rid of all those demons you got? No. You had to go through healing and deliverance, didn't you? Amen? Claudius. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Praise God. Uh, where are we going? <laughs> okay. Uh, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are what? Not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Giving of thanks. So, you know, we replace our coarse jesting with an attitude of thank you. Thank you. I remember one time, uh, I had a dream one night that somebody got me so upset. And uh, I said a cuss word to this person. And I woke up and I said, 
man, I don't like that, Lord, I repent, this, that, whatever. You know, that it happened that day. And just when this person got me so upset, I got, I got caught up in the flesh, and I was about to say, and I remembered my dream. And I went, <laughs> then I repented for thinking of that word. <laughs> I, ran, I went back in the house and I, oh, Lord, forgive me, I'm dead. <laughs> you know what he said to me? Your mistakes are my problem. As long as you're a position, your mistakes are his problems. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. I said, thank you. I won't do it on purpose now. You know, I'm not going to test you. I just... <laughs> Praise be to God. Everybody all right? Let's go on. Verse 5. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Man, don't miss your inheritance just for the ways of the world, for your own desires. You know how many times you miss God? How many times people miss God because they're trying to work it their way? They go around that mountain over and over. Well, guess who caused you to miss God? It wasn't the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was the devil. <laughs> Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Yeah. Now the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience to rescue them. Therefore, do not be what? Partakers with them. Oh, hallelujah. So we're not to give place to the devil. You know that, right? So that means that you and I must maintain our deliverance. We must maintain our healing. One of the things that we must really understand, to under, really get understanding is not grieving the Holy Spirit. These things grieve the Holy Spirit. That's where people fall into religion instead of relationship. They, they fall in the arena that if they dress a certain way, <laughs> they're all right with God. Yeah. If they go to church and go to Bible study, they're all right with God. If they feed the hungry, they're all right with God. Yeah. Amen. If they serve in ministry, they're all right with God. That's got nothing to do with you entering the kingdom of God. Amen. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Your works have nothing. They are not accountable for anything of entering the eternal life. Only His grace and His blood allows you there. But He says, don't trample my blood nor my grace. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So we do not want to give place to the devil. The only place we want to give is to the Holy Spirit. That means that you and I must stay in the Spirit, doesn't it? Yeah. Amen? Amen? You must stay in the Spirit. Go to Galatians chapter 5. We're just flipping around here. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, it's a good night to repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know I'm not alone. <laughs> Glory to God. In verse 16 and 17, would you read it with me? I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Whoa! It sounds so simple, doesn't it? For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. Has everybody got it? That you don't do the things that you wish or your desire. See, you're one... In your walk with the Lord, one eye 
at least one eye all the time should be on God. Whatever you're doing, even if you're at work, one part should always be acknowledging the Lord. Acknowledging the Lord. You know, even when we go to buy material, I always ask, I welcome the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is, I welcome the Holy Spirit. In the morning, I welcome the to guide me. Show me what I'm supposed to do. You know, shut the door that's not of you and open the door that's of you. See, because what happens is people get complacent and they forget to keep an eye on the Lord. And then they think it's God when they're doing it. And next thing you know, they're frustrated, doing their own, doing it in the flesh. Man, nothing's going right, this, that, whatever. You know what? Even when things are going wrong, if you're in the spirit, nothing matters. Amen. Nothing matters. Amen. You're not concerned. I mean, you have a responsibility, yes. We're to be stewards of God's things. We have a responsibility. There's a certain concern there, isn't there? It's a responsibility. But it's not supposed to bring torment. Oh, how am I going to do this? Oh, I, I, that's not daddy. That ain't him at all. I never saw Jesus do that. I never even asked him, how are we going to do this? They always went to him and asked him. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you and I must stay in the spirit. That means that you and I must stay in position. We must walk it out. We must endure. Why? Because God has a plan. When I don't know what to do, I just say, well, God's got a plan. Because I don't know. But I know he'll bring it to pass. I might not know what to do right then and there, but I will. Amen. And when I don't know what to do, I don't want to do nothing Amen. until I know what to do. That's not called, well, then why don't you step out in faith? No, then I'm stepping out on an assumption. Because faith says, comes by hearing. Faith says, you heard what God said, then you do it. That's faith. If you haven't heard what God said and you walk out, that's called assumption. There's a difference. That's why people get in trouble. Well, I thought. That's the problem. You thought. <laughs> thought I saw that smoke. That wasn't a sweet aroma. That was somebody thinking, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we can have fun, right? So we must stay in position so we can receive direction. Amen. Has everybody got it? Yeah. You know how many believers have lost so much money in businesses and all kinds of stuff? You know why? They want it. They had the desire to do something for God. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that desire to do something for God. But if it's, listen, everything is in God's timing. That's how his will activates. Yeah. If it's not God's timing, it's not his will. People get married ahead of time. Problems are manifested. But we know it was God's will. Well, if it's God's will, then you're waiting to get married. Believe me, down the road, but man, I don't know, how can God's will be so... <laughs> then you blame God for him sending you that woman or that man. Come on, how could you do this to me? God didn't do it. It wasn't his timing. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Really, many believers lose money. They don't know how to manage their money. And some of them are in love with their money. Hello? You kidding? Give an extra tithe or whatever. My God, who's going to pay these bills? Like you're paying them anyways. That money didn't come from you. It came from God. Amen. Hello. Praise God. So we must stay in position to get what? Direction. Why? Because we do not want to make place for the devil. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm just laying the foundation. To God be the glory. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Is everybody there? Amen. Read it with me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what the wiles mean? Trickery. How many people think of the devil ain't got nothing on me? No, he doesn't have anything on you because he's in you. When you're thinking that way, you're possessed. 
That's a terrible state to be in. The devil doesn't bother me at all. Of course not. He's living there rent free. <laughs> and he's having a party every single night, and you're not invited. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. So the wiles of the devil means trickery. He wants to trick you, right? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Gladi. And verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22, it says, Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? You know what that means? You need to fellowship with the right believers. Quit trying to rescue people. You know how many people get lost by rescuing them? <laughs> many. Well, I was just trying to do God's will. Well, did God tell you? Well, it says it in the Bible. No, did God tell you? Well, it says go out and make disciples of, na of nations. Well, that's why I went to that crack house to rescue a friend of mine. I just ended up staying for a week. Well, you really were help, weren't you? You rescued real good. Do you understand there's a difference? If you haven't heard it, you're not to do it. Okay, let's go a little further. But avoid what? Foolish and arrogant disputes, knowing that they what? Generate strife. Oh, the devil always going to try and suck you in the ring. Come on in. Don't go in the ring. You know why people get sucked in the ring? Because they're still trying to prove themselves. You don't have anything to prove to nobody. God knows who you are. That's all that matters. I've been persecuted and all kinds of other stuff. You know what keeps me going? Is that my daddy knows me. That's all that matters. See, I don't look at people. I've got to look at him. They can say whatever they want. Yeah, my flesh may start to shake a little bit. I get the Holy Ghost bat beat it down. <laughs> I got a letter the other day from somebody, you know, uh, from some inmate out in the in the jail. I never, I don't know the person or anything. And uh, the first thing, I, I mean, it was like a three or four page letter, two sides. I'm thinking, what's what's this guy? I mean, if you want an application, we'll send you one. You know, he's he's got. At first, I start reading it. My name is such and such. Praise. He's quoting all kinds of scriptures, and I start skimming now. Okay, all of these scriptures. Okay. Then he gets to. I've been. Uh, at this summit seminary, I've been at this. I've graduated this and this and this, and and uh, and I hope you can receive correction. I just wrapped it up and threw it out. You know what it was? Nothing but a heavyweight demon. That piece of paper was an accursed item. It was associated with a religious spirit. That's all it was. Believe me, when I tore it up, that's all I kept hearing. Why don't you write him back and say something like this? <laughs> And one of the things, one of the things I saw was he was coming against tongues, you know, whatever. And and then he he was complaining. He said he saw one of our newsletters and he didn't like what was said. You know, I just I I didn't get sucked in the ring. I threw it out, but the devil was trying to draw me in the ring. Come on, man, you need to tell him this. It will help him. It will straighten him up. No, no, that's called. And I heard the Holy Spirit going, "Don't return evil with evil." And I wanted to ask him just one time. <laughs> oh, come on. But you know, I have a relationship with my dad. And, and, and because of that, I, I wanted to please him. Let me tell you, I was beaten up for about two hours. The next morning I got up, there that demon was again. Hey, you remember that letter you got? Did you get out of my room in Jesus' name? <laughs> He was trying to convince me to go pull it out of the garbage. <laughs> I'll teach that religious demon. It's not the person, it's a demon. And you can't counsel a demon. You can only cast them out. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? <laughs> okay, somebody tell me where... Oh yeah, verse 24. And a servant... Of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. 
Daddy wasn't going to allow me to do that, probably because there wasn't humility involved. So I just let it ride. If God perhaps will grant them what? Repentance. Repentance. So that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the what? Snare of the devil. So, having been taken captive by him to do what? His will. So we just talked about not making place for the devil, right? Knowing that the devil is tricky. And then we just talked about being snared by him. That's somebody who's already been snared by him and caught in him. What well, the only way out of it is repentance. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Don't get sucked in the ring, believe me. Every time you get sucked in the ring with him, you lose. Because that's when the battle is yours and not the Lord's. You get sucked in the ring, you're going to get beat up. That ring is not your place unless the Lord is there. I remember I had a dream one time. I have all these kinds of dreams. I love it. My wife had the dream too. We both got witness on it. Uh, she went to bed early because she was getting up at 5 or 4 in the morning. And she got up and talked about these three uh, foxes that they were beautiful. And... Um, all of a sudden, these, they, they started biting her and they were vicious and they started coming all over her. And, and, and she kept beating them down and they were able to get underneath the door and everything. And she woke up and she told me about these three foxes. And I knew that the Lord was trying to share something with me. So I go to sleep that night. I got a dream. Here I am. And, and next thing I know, I see this boxing ring. And, there's, and somebody's putting boxing gloves on my hands. Somebody was in the ring. I could not tell. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't see. But I knew something or someone was in the ring. And uh, I was walking towards the ring. And I had this, like, robe on and stuff, you know, like a boxer. And I'm going, and I'm going, Lord, and he's putting these gloves on me. And I'm going, I'm not in shape for this. You know, I'm not, I'm not ready to go in no, I'm not ready to box. I need to get in shape. Give me a few weeks. A few weeks? Give me a few years, you know. I'm going, and I stopped, and then I was like, all right, I'll do it for you. And I started walking towards the, the ring again. And then I stopped, and I said, you know, Lord, wait a minute. He put the glove on the other hand, and he's tightening it all up. And I'm going, but Lord, I'm not in shape for this to fight this thing, you know. But I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. And I walked up to the ring, and I woke up. Well, the next morning, I had a meeting, and uh, come to find out, they were three foxes that were very religious and uh, they actually held me into a room and they wanted to teach me how to be a man. They were coming against my ponytail and they were claiming to be believers and they were coming against the move of the spirit and uh, they called uh, Brother Benny Hinn a witch doctor and Mother Teresa a witch and all this other stuff and I'm thinking my God and I kept seeing this huge shadow behind this guy and I said Lord do, do you want me to just get on my knees and start praying in tongues to you and it's like no they'll kill you I'm like okay I mean for two hours we, we were going back and forth because I explained to them about my encounter with the Lord and he, I talked with them over the phone one time and so forth and, and they were getting some product from us and so he said he'd like to see me, and then he brought some other individuals, three other, two other individuals in this room, and one they were, they were standing next, one of them was standing next to the door. So we discussed things for about two hours, and I was just drained. I was drained, and I could, I mean, you could just see the demons and the uh, religious demons. And then I saw in the spirit this man with a sawed-off shotgun killing believers who were praying in tongues and moving in the gifts of the spirit. He was killing believers. And I thought, Lord, what's up? And the other part was, how about getting me out of here? <laughs> and he said, I'm going to make a way of escape for you. And I said, okay. And uh, the next thing I know, this one guy, he just, the Lord says to me, walk towards that door. And I walked towards that door and that dude moved. And I told him that they, of course, I didn't know the fullness of blasphemy. I wasn't, I was still a baby in Christ. And I said, you know, you guys all just blasphemy the Holy Spirit. You don't know the Father. And I told those guys, if you follow that man, you're all going to the pit. Something to that degree, I don't know. Anyways, I walked out of there, and my legs were shaking. I could barely drive home. I was so drained and so weak. I came to the front door here and fell right in. Bam, Mom and my wife 
laid hands on me, prayed in the spirit, and I got refreshed and popped right up. Don't go in a ring unless God is with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Where are we going? <laughs> okay. Don't get snared either, right? Second Peter chapter 3. Praise God. Praise God. Second Peter chapter 3. Well, Claudius. If you find me start to speed up more, because we're running out of tape. <laughs> we're trying to make it a one tape teaching here. <laughs> So if I start praying in the Spirit, interpret it, write it down, you'll be okay. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 and 18. Second Peter, thank you. About four scriptures ahead, okay. Second Peter chapter 3. Okay. I'll go there. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 17 and 18. Let's read it together. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the what? Wicked. Wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. That means grow in grace. Growing in grace means grow in your relationship. Grow in knowledge means growing in the truth. Has everybody got it? Amen. You must grow in your relationship with the Lord and you must begin to grow in the truth and use it for your behalf. You. Amen? Glory to God. Go to John chapter 5. Okay. I can do that. John chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Maintaining your deliverance. Maintaining your freedom. That's what it's about, isn't it? Amen. And verse 13. John chapter 5, 13. Praise God. Is everybody there? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. What did he tell him? Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Wow. Don't sin anymore, lest a worse thing come upon you. He told that to the woman, too. He said, Go. Don't sin no more. In other words, he forgave her, didn't he? He said, don't sin no more. What worse things are going to come? Now, sin means the presence of evil. It's not the act. The Word says that you can sin in your thoughts. Right? The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Right? So we've got to be careful. We've got to be able to discern those too, can't we? Because the devil will answer you just by saying, yeah. Next thing you know, you're agreeing. Two touch and agree, and it comes to pass. You touch and agree with the devil, it's going to happen. Is everybody with me? Good. Now, there are seven things I want to talk about what we need to do. The first one, Psalm 34. Seven meaning what? Complete and perfect. Psalm 34. Glorious. Would you read verse 4 with me? I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my what? Fears. That's bondage, isn't it? Fears are bondage, man. Let me share something with you. The first thing that we must do is seek. That means fellowship and prayer. That means maintaining a relationship. If you're not an individual that does not pray, you're not free. And that devil is there preventing you from praying. I don't care what it is. 
I don't care if you say our Father. Just don't say Hail Mary, all right? But just speak something from your heart. Talk to Him. Get dressed with the full armor of God. Be disciplined to make yourself pray every day. Because as soon as you get up on every morning, the devil's got a list at your bed. You know what you need to do today? That's what he's got. Or he's got something, man, you've got to go out there and do this. He's going to either try to cause you to be miserable or get you caught up in busyness of all. And, well, you know, I'm too busy to pray. I've got this to pray. Man, I'm too tired to pray. You must pray. Every believer must pray every morning. You know, there's a saying that, that uh, this pastor was saying, you know, when I skip the day of prayer, my wife knew. When I skip two days of prayer, my kids knew. When I skip three days of prayer, the world knew. Don't skip prayer. Seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. You must go to prayer. Go to verse 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord what? Delivers him out of them. He delivers him out of them all, doesn't he? You must seek him. You must pray every day. I don't care if you don't get an answer. I don't care if you don't get an answer. You still got to go pray. Amen? Amen? Go to Job, chapter 42. Glory. So the first thing you must do is seek Him with relationship by prayer. Seek Him with relationship by prayer. In verse 10, in Job 42, 42, would you please say that with me? And the Lord restored Job's losses when he what? Prayed for his friends. Glory. That's intercession, isn't it? Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You know what? I lost this house. This house I lost. I lost my child, who's 31. I lost everything. When the Lord rescued me and I began to interse intercede and pray for others, He began to restore. Not twice, more. More. And He's still restoring. You know how many kids I have? Many. <laughs> many. I've got a bunch of kids. Praise God. You know? Homes and whatever. They're His though. He's just letting me use them for His glory. Right? See, when you begin... Some people need healing. Start praying for someone else's healing. Amen. Just said that the Lord answered His prayer when He started praying for somebody else's stuff. You need to get delivered from something? Start praying that somebody else could deliver for the same thing. These are supernatural. These are things... Not of the natural realm. These are things of the spirit realm. People are still trying to become walk as believers using natural things. It doesn't work. Hallelujah. Second thing. First Peter chapter five. I knew we'd get there. First Peter chapter five and verse six. Did you read it with me? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, not you. Let Him. The second thing we must be is humble. Now, humble involves certain things. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about looking like a rain lion seeking whom he can devour. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Hello. <laughs> but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus, Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered a while. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So we must stay humble. One of the things that involves humble is to repent when you blow it. I blew it. I need to repent. 
We must always be in an attitude of thanking God even for your suffering. And thanking Him for your freedom. We must keep a good attitude with joy. And we must resist the woe is me. That's a part of humble. Everybody got it? I guess I better say it again. Huh? <laughs> the, first, we, to, the second thing we're talking about here is to be humble. That means to repent when you blow it, thanking God for your suffering and your freedom. That's why the Bible says count it all joy as you go through trials and tribulations. Keep a good attitude with joy and resist the woe is me. The woe is me spirit. Resist that woe is me spirit. I'm the only one that's ever happens to. I can never do anything right. See, the devil always wants to bring you to you or your past. He's always trying to bring you to you and your past. If he can convince you that it's you, then he's going to give you something to fix it. And that's not going to be from daddy. That's why people run to drugs, alcohol, and the refrigerator. Amen. <laughs> That's why they run to other things. Security. You know, security. To them it's a security because they're actually looking for God, but the devil keeps putting everything in their way. Lust and all kinds of other stuff. Glory to God. Security. Cigarettes. Security. Listen, you might not even realize it. It's security. You know, some people have a certain superstition type of thing. If they wear this, something's going to happen if they do this. You know? Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. They call it lucky, you know? Lucky something, lucky coin or whatever it is, you know? Lucky. There's no such thing as lucky. That's just Lucifer. Nickname. <laughs> So when you say lucky, you just call Lucifer. I'm lucky. No, you're not. So the first thing we need to do is prayer with relationship. The second thing is to be humble with repenting when you blow it. Resisting the woe is we and have a good attitude. The third thing, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. False securities. That's what it is. That's the word I was looking for. Glory. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. I think that's what it is. But be filled with what? The Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God or the reverence of God. The Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit, not with things of the world. That means that you've got to worship, doesn't it? Yeah. Amen? Worship is very important. In the, in the book of Galatians it says, uh, why don't you turn there since we're there? Just turn one page back, or two pages. I'll make it three. Galatians 6. Depends how big your pages are. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. So the devil will try to prevent you from sowing in the Spirit, won't you? Because if you sow in the Spirit, you get filled. Sowing in the Spirit must come from your mouth. Reading your Bible is not sowing in the Spirit. Amen. That strengthens your spirit so that you can sow. Amen. Is everybody all right? Amen. Yeah, man, I've been reading my Bible all day. Praise God. Did you get filled yet? Not yet, but I'm ready. <laughs> Praise God. I'll start worshiping your king. Isaiah 10. Glory. 
Isaiah 10. No, we're still on the third one. Okay, praise God. Bloody is. Isaiah 10. And verse something. 27. Isaiah 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Let me share something with you. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is the anointing. The anointing breaks all yoke of bondages. It's our responsibility to be filled, isn't it? Amen? Filled. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Go to Matthew 15. This is the fourth thing. So the first one was seeking with prayer. Second one was be humble, repent. Third one was be stay filled with the Holy Spirit. And the fourth one is Matthew 15. Hallelujah. Matthew 15, verse 16. Matthew 15, and verse 16. Oh, praise God. Okay. And Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they what? They file a man. Let me share something with you. Like I said, what you speak can open a spirit right to you. People don't even realize it. Gossip, all that stuff can open a spirit right to you. When, as soon as you open your mouth and some accusation, whatever it is, unless it's from God. Now, I've had to be harsh with some people and I knew it was from the Lord. I even repented afterwards. I said, oh, Lord, why, why did I... You know, God will use flesh too. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what comes out of a mouth, your mouth, I'm sharing with you, you could shoot out and that spirit comes right in. He's just standing there waiting. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're still saying, you can't stop. You've got no control over it. If you don't have control of something of your members, that demon has control of it. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adultery adulteresses, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Glory to God. You can lose your deliverance what you speak. Number five, Psalm 119. Anybody ever come up to you and say, man, I know you're struggling, let's pray. No, I ain't praying. Ooh. I don't need prayer. No, you don't. You need deliverance. <laughs> I agree. You don't need prayer. Come out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 105. Would you read it with me, please? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let me share something with you. You must take authority over your situations with the Word of God. This is number five. Take authority over your circumstances or situations with the Word of God. Psalm 119, 105 and Hebrews 4, 12. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul, spirit, and joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. 
Amen? You must take your authority over your circumstances with the Word of God. And the sixth thing, Mark 16. Mark 16. glory. In verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow me. In my name they will what? Yes, Cast out devils and they will speak with new tongues. Glory to God. They'll take up serpents and drink anything deadly. It won't hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. Let me share something with you. What prevents people from able to go in that position? Fear. Fear. Sixth thing is do not fall into the area of worry and fear. They will open a spirit big time. Do not fall into that arena of worry or fear. Second Timothy chapter 1. Do you know that when you are in frustration, you can't hear God? Even Jesus, when he went in to heal that woman, everybody was yakking and moaning and groaning and mourning. He told everybody to leave the room so he could heal this person. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Is everybody there? Good. In verse 7, would you read it? For God has not given us a spirit of fear. I, you know, sometimes I, I, sometimes I wish they would just cross out the word spirit and put demon. Maybe be more imparted in the people. You know? God has not given us a demon of fear. Ooh. But of power and of love and of, of what? Sound mind. mind. Hallelujah. So the sixth thing is do not fall into the area or arena of worry and fear. It opens the devil to you quickly. Is everybody with me? Praise God. Number seven and the final. First Corinthians 15. All praise be to God. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse um, 33. It says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. <laughs> Evil company corrupts good habits. Now our hope is that our habits would corrupt evil company. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it doesn't always work out that way, does it? But it can. But so you cannot be influenced by this company of evil company. Listen, so many people think just because they're set free and whatever that they can go to a bar and, and fellowship with people. Believe me, you'll go back there. You know, that's why even Jesus sends his disciples out two by two. But there's a time and place for everything, which is God's perfect will, isn't it? It's His perfect will. So you've got to be careful of... Actually, you need to stay away from people, places, and things that will open doors to sin. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verses 
2 Corinthians chapter 6. And the word says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people. If. The word therefore means if. If you come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean. And I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The seventh thing is to stay away from people, places, and things that will open doors to sin. And I'm going to close with this last scripture, and it's Matthew 16. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 24. And Jesus said to his what? His disciples. He didn't say it to the lost. He said it to his disciples. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loves his life for my sake, or whoever loses his life for my sake, will find it. That means you must deny yourself to do any of this. You must have a desire for the life of Christ and not for your own life. You must come to an understanding that it's not your life anymore. It's His. That you were bought with a price and sealed with a guarantee. It's our responsibility to keep ourselves clean. Amen? As we keep ourselves clean, 